Will emerged long before us. Even the first living beings ever must have had a primitive will to live. The free will debate ignores the origins of will, instead arguing in circles about whether human consciousness affords us free will or whether instead we're just cause and effect machines like all other organisms. How can we ever hope to resolve the free will debate if we don't even have a scientific explanation for what will is and how it starts? That's like trying to explain lightning before understanding electricity. But who among the debaters thinks that the origins of life has anything to do with the free will debate? Most assume that evolution explains life, the random generation of replicator machines. Their only question is whether the machines are freed by the onset of consciousness. Will isn't limited to the kind of emotional and conscious motivations we humans have. It starts as the will to live, common to all organisms, including you, with your unfelt, unconscious bodily functions humming away all day and night keeping you alive. Will to live is the ability to make self-directed effort, effort by an organism for its benefit, tailored to its environment. It's right there in the biologist's key terms, function, fitness, behavior. Behavior is not just any phenomena, it's functionally fitted effort, effort of value to the organism fitted to its circumstance. Self-directed effort is an organism interpreting its environment for its own benefit. The difference between chemistry's cause and effect phenomena and life's means to ends interpretive effort is also ignored in the free will debate. Look, a stop sign doesn't cause you to stop unless you crash into it. Rather, you interpret it, making effort to stop for your benefit fitted to traffic conditions. If stop signs cause stopping, everything and everyone, even a pebble and the neighborhood cat, would stop at them. Likewise, words don't cause you to think. Rather, you interpret them. And if they're in a language you don't know, you can't. Pheromones don't cause a bug to fight or mate. And changes in day length don't cause plants to flower. Physical causes and willed interpretations are different. But again, this difference is ignored in the free will debate. That's why determinism is credible at all. If interpretation is just cause and effect, then you just think you're alive, even though you, thinking, and aliveness aren't real. Hear the pretzel logic? What we've needed all along is a realistic scientific explanation for what will is and how it emerges from otherwise aimless chemistry. Scientist Terence Deacon has such an explanation, which I outline in these videos. If you're mostly interested in human free will, visit the last video in the series here.